Welcome to today's video. I am taking you along with me for my productive and peaceful day in the kitchen. But to start off this morning, I got up early, got myself together and went to the shop because one of our local health stores gives a discount to Scott's work on one day of the week, you get 10% off your whole order. So I try to plan my grocery shopping uh, around this day and I don't go there very much. I maybe go once or twice a month. My main thing that I wanted was overripe bananas because they usually have a full section of all their overripe fruit that they give a big discount on. They only had two packages but it ended up only being 86 cents for both of those. They also had their Zevias on sale for $5.99 for the six pack and then I got the 10% off so I got the cherry cola that's just a fun drink that we like to have on hand and then they had this brand of broccoli on sale for $3.29 a bag azure does sell this brand and i've bought it from them before in the big box i think you can get a pack of 10 and it's a pretty good deal but we are limited on freezer space right now so two packages was all that i needed from them and then they also had these beef sticks buy one get one free it's a really good brand and we like taking beef sticks with us when we travel they had these two items on their last chance whenever they have this last chance sticker these items are usually around 50% off so this SBF was originally $25 and I got it for 13 then the 10% off of that and then the perfect C lotion was regularly 38 and I got it for 29 with the 10% off of that I usually don't use SBF that much I will use my red raspberry oil but there are some occasions when I know I'm going to be out in the sun for a long period of time and I don't know if the red raspberry oil would work long enough. So I like having this on hand. It's not just SPF. There's lots of other ingredients that are really good for your skin, which I liked. I've actually never tried this brand. My shell, I probably would never buy it if it was full price, but because it was such a good price, I wanted to try it out. Normally for my face, the vitamin C serum I use, my mom got me into, it's the Mad Hippie brand. I use their vitamin C and vitamin A serum. So the vitamin C in the morning and then the vitamin A in the evenings. And I'm almost out of my vitamin C. So I thought, I would go ahead and give this a try. I thought I would just show you in case you're interested what it looks like on the skin. So on my skin this morning, very simple. Every morning I will wash my face with jojoba oil that's infused in something, rooibos, calendula, and then I'll use the jade roller on my face and then the gua sha tool and both of those are for lymphatic drainage and I notice a huge difference being consistent with those and then I'll wash my face again and I will put my homemade witch hazel on it. I've made a video on that before. I highly recommend making it yourself. It is so much more cost effective and my skin loves that stuff. And then I'll put my just a little drop of the Mad Hippie Vitamin C Serum on and then I will put one drop of the True K2 oil on it uh, as well. My skin loves this vitamin K drops. This is from Health Natura. If you know anything about Ray Peat, they're big into selling supplements that complement Ray Peat's way of thinking and so I put this one drop of this on my face in the morning. Also at night I put it in my Vitamin A Serum and then I also every morning and night put six drops of the vitamin K under my tongue. Then I will usually put on the Flawless Face Primer. This is from Tubes & Co. This is one of my favorite things that they sell. I bought this last August and you can see I still have this much left. So I've had it for a year now and I still have some left. And I say that because it's very expensive. I think it's 46 or $47, but there's so many really good ingredients for your skin. My skin loves this stuff. It feels very smoothing. I don't know if it compares to other primers very well because I've never used a primer in my life up until this, until I bought this, but I love the way it, it makes my face feel. My mom just recently got me this eyebrow pencil from Tubes & Go. I love it. It's also might be one of my favorite items that they sell because the color match is perfect for me. I don't have blonde eyebrows and I don't have dark brown eyebrows. <laughs> so this is their deep taupe color and it matches me perfect. This is the tip. You can see it's this triangle tip, which is really nice. It's easy to put on. And then the other end has the little spoolie. And then for my cheeks, I put on the Tubes & Co. Um, it's the cheek and lip tint. I would never use this for my lips. It's way too dry to to use it on your lips but uh, I can put the shade here the, the color I got because I can't remember what it is and it looks like a cream blush but it's actually once you apply it it spreads to me more like a powder blush um, and again I got this last November and you can see that is how much 
I have left. And then also the Tubes & Co mascara. And that's all that I have on my face today. I do have a discount code for Tubes & Co. Uh, you can use it just one time. It's Home With Kelly. I'll have my link for them below. They are a Christian family owned business. The makeup is the best ingredients you can find. It is on the expensive side, but there are things to me that are really worth it because there are things that I cannot make myself. I'm not making mascara myself. I'm not making the face prime or the eyebrow pencil. So I'm happy to buy it from a company that I share values with. And from my experience, this stuff has lasted a very long time. If you want me to do a full video of all the makeup stuff I have, I could probably do that. I need to wash my makeup brushes. So maybe I'll do a a full makeup stuff of all that I have. When I'm at home, I keep it very, very simple. Since it is simple, I thought I would show you what these look like on the skin. So the vitamin C, I'm kind of amazed. The color is this like brown color. I love watching makeup tutorials in the evenings. That's one of my favorite things to do is watch YouTube uh, makeup ladies that show you how to put your makeup on. I just find it really relaxing. So uh, they always use like all the toxic makeup stuff, but I still like watching them. It feels very nice. It's not as velvety as this. And then the SPF, you know, I'm hoping to get outside today, but with all the stuff I have to do inside, I probably won't, but we will just see if this leaves the white residue because I would say that is the biggest complaint of a more natural uh, sun lotion or SPF is that it leaves that white coating. So we will see if that does that. Nope. All right, that feels very nice. It's a little oily, but it's what you would expect from an SPF. I think that's nice. That was just a fun little aside of things that I got today. The main thing that I'm going to do is lots of kitchen prep work. So we get our milk once a week from our local dairy. We get 10 gallons because we drive an hour and a half to go get it. And so what I do when I get the milk is we put it in the fridge and we let the cream separate. And then depending on what I need that month, I will either make butter with the cream or make ice cream because I got that huge thing of Sierra Nevada butter from Azure. I don't need butter. So I'm going to make ice cream with it. And we have strawberries. And last month I made strawberry ice cream and it was amazing. Also, I'm going to turn some of the milk into yogurt and then whatever milk is left over, I will freeze it. So I already started the freezing process yesterday of some of the milk. Yesterday was a prep work day of getting things ready. I emptied out our chicken bones that were in the freezer and made chicken broth overnight. And those will also go into mason jars back into the freezer. Then I have some meals that I want to make uh, to freeze. So it's going to be a fun day in the kitchen. The music that I always play over my videos is by a guy that Scott used to go to church with in South Africa. He has three albums, two of them are instrumental, and he gave us permission to use those instrumental albums in our videos. I'll link his iTunes shop below. It's just so peaceful to have his instrumental music, and I love playing it when I'm working in the home. So let's go to the kitchen. to pick some onions that we will use in our cooking today. I was amazed by how big this one is because the voles have gotten most of our onions this year. We dug up our potatoes last week and I'm hoping to turn this into a sunflower bed if it's not too late in the season. And while Scott was digging up the potatoes, he found this little guy. We thought it was a vole at first, which is why we got it in the bucket to kill it. But upon closer look, we realized it was just a little shrew. So he was released across the street. And our harvest for the potatoes this year was 52 pounds. So we were really pleased with that considering we didn't mound very well. We only used the grass clippings that we had on our property. We could not find a hay that hadn't been sprayed. And for curing the potatoes, I am following Jill Winger's method of putting them in boxes 
and a dark place and I did put a fan on them for a few days everything is in a single file line except for the right side box so the left ones are all the ones that are in really good condition for more of a long-term storage and then the right box are the ones with either insect holes or got hit in the process of digging up the potatoes in the refrigerator just to help them cool and they get really nice and gelatinous and then I will put them in the freezer which is why I didn't fill them all the way to the top because if you're gonna store anything in glass in the freezer you really want to make sure you stop before the glass jar starts curving at the top and that prevents you from breaking your glass jars and now I am on to making yogurt. So this is again a Jill Winger style of making yogurt. I highly recommend watching her YouTube video. You fill up your quart sized mason jars with the milk, put them in the pot on a medium to high heat until it reaches 180 degrees. And now I am sifting my wheat berries to make my sourdough tortillas. This is hard white wheat berries. And I always sift my wheat berries because you never know what debris is going to be in them. Something I wanna point out with this video is I never want you to compare your day to my day because everyone has unique circumstances, unique goals, unique things that your husband needs help with. That's the blessing of being home is we get to be our husband's helper and be flexible in whatever that looks like for your unique circumstances. Some days are more productive than other days. So my hope more than anything with these videos is that it just gives you ideas and inspiration of the beauty of being home. Our culture wants women to work outside of the home and there's actually an abundance to do within the home and if you're blessed with children that they get to be a part of that productive household and also a peaceful household that what we do each day that we carry an attitude of peace and joy and hosting the presence of God as we work glorifying him with the work of our hands and also glorifying him with rest so that's my hopes in making these day in the life videos that it is inspiring for you and even gives you some ideas You can see in today's batch there's a corn, a few rocks, some seeds, and some stems from the wheat. So these are all things that would have been ground in our Nutramil if I hadn't taken them out. So just checking on that yogurt, it's not there at the right temperature yet, so I'm going to carry on with making these sourdough tortillas. I have worked very hard to create this recipe because it has taken me a long time to get the right consistency with fresh wheat berries. So I will link the recipe that I've created below and I'll also link the recipe that I used to follow when I used store-bought flour. I highly recommend that recipe as well if you don't have a wheat grinder. It also makes really good sourdough tortillas. And if you are using wheat berries, do not use a soft wheat berry. I prefer hard white, but if you like more of a nutty flavor, you could also use the hard red wheat. And now these yogurts need to sit out and rest until they hit around 110 degrees. And now to making our strawberry ice cream. 
I follow the Cuisinart recipe from the book that we got with our ice cream maker and they have the exact recipe on their website so I will link that for you below because it is our favorite. The only difference that I do is I do a half a cup of sugar with the strawberries and then I do one cup of maple syrup instead of the additional cup of sugar within the milk so that way it's not as much sugar and because we have so much cream i'm making two batches of ice cream so i'm doing two batches of strawberries as well and then i recently read that you can make tea out of strawberry leaves so i'm putting my tops in a mason jar with some other herbs of oat straw and nettle and milk thistle and i'm going to put this out in the sun for a delicious sun tea So while these skirt steaks are going, I have semi-thawed out these grass-fed beef livers that I'm slicing up to put in our smoothies. We only do this with beef liver that we get from a fully grass-fed, grass-finished farm that we know is of quality and align with our values because we are eating this raw. And whenever you eat raw meat, you do want to make sure it has been frozen for at least 14 days. Normally, I like it to be a bit more frozen. I let it sit for a little too long thawing out in the fridge. And then I did rinse it in cold water just to get that excess blood off of it. And now I'm just using an extra sharp knife since it is more thawed. It's just easier to cut when it's more frozen and then I put it on a cookie sheet on parchment paper and this whole tray will go in the freezer and freeze into little pieces and we will put two of those pieces into our smoothie every morning. This is for the nutritional benefits of raw grass-fed beef liver. It is very high in nutrients. Some people say that this is better than a prenatal vitamin. Beef liver is known to be high in zinc and copper, selenium, vitamin A to help with vision and your reproductive organs and immune function and keeping your immune system strong. So there's a lot of benefits to taking beef liver. If you can't stomach the idea of putting beef liver in your smoothie, you could also go with the capsules of desiccated beef liver. Perfect Supplement sells a powder and a capsuled powder and I do have a discount code for them below. So with the livers in the freezer and the milk at the right temperature, I am now adding two tablespoons to each jar of this Stonyfield probiotic yogurt. You want to make sure you're using a yogurt with the live cultures in it. Put the lid on and I'm going to put them in our hard cooler with the water that was in the pot, the warm water, and then I will close this and leave it sit for 24 hours. And now on to making my favorite meatloaf. This meatloaf freezes very well, so if you want to make a freezer meal, this is a great option. I did two pounds of ground beef and one pound of ground lamb. I will link the recipe for this below for you as well. And now I am making the topping for the meatloaf, which I will not add because these are freezer meals like the recipe says to pour some of it on top during the baking process, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to store this in a mason jar for when we do thaw it. And the brown sugar, I make myself with sugar and molasses, and then anytime a recipe calls for 
dried mustard, I just use brown mustard seeds and grind it with my mortar and pestle and it works perfect. And now I'm going to thaw out some of the sourdough breadcrumbs that I had in the freezer. This will be used ground up in our meatballs that I make this afternoon. So while that meatloaf is in the oven for an hour, I've cleaned the kitchen up, got it nice and organized and ready for the afternoon. So I'm going to take a little break to enjoy the sunshine and read a book. Letting these breadcrumbs soak in milk to get nice and soft and we are going to work on our ice cream. It turns out my little container that needs to be frozen for the ice cream was not frozen. So this is going in the fridge and made into ice cream the next morning. I got this little ice cream machine from an auction for $2, brand new, never used. And that is the beauty of thrifting, going to auctions, estate sales, you never know what you will find. While the meatballs are in the oven, I'm going to start working on these sourdough tortillas. I have tried just using a rolling pin and it is really hard to get an even shape using a rolling pin. So my new trick is using a plate to press the balls into a perfect circle. For the flour that I use, I grind up some of my soft wheat berries because it is more of an all-purpose flour which works easier for dusting it grinds finer which is really nice for this purpose and then i love using my little tiny roller pen that i have for thinning it out just a little further before putting it on the cast iron skillet and i have two skillets going at the same time for the first few times I made tortillas, I just did one at a time so that way it wasn't as overwhelming and I could keep an eye on them easier since I didn't know how long they needed to be on the cast iron skillet. So I usually keep my heat around medium to high heat. You don't want to go too high because then they'll burn and then you don't want to go too low either. So at the beginning, it's a little bit of trial and error to see how they're cooking. The key is not overcooking them because once you overcook them, they get really hard and that makes it nearly impossible to fold them without cracking. Especially if you're gonna be making quesadillas, they're gonna go back on the skillet anyway, so I would prefer them to be on the underdone side than the overdone side. And then another key tip that has helped me with keeping soft, pliable tortillas is having a wet linen dishcloth in a bowl, and by wet I mean damp, and then having another damp cloth over the top and you keep your tortillas in that bowl and it keeps it nice and steamy which keeps them nice and pliable and soft. I notice a huge difference when I just sit them out after cooking them and put them on a plate versus when I keep them in the steamy bowl. It really does help keep them nice and soft and easy to fold.
The sun tea was delicious. It had a faint taste of strawberries, so it was a really nice refreshing tea. And the liver is nice and frozen solid, so those will go into a stasher bag and into the freezer. And then the meatballs are also getting a flash freeze on the cookie sheet, and then I transfer them into this container with the lid for the freezer. I hope this has been an enjoyable video for you to watch and it's given you some ideas for your home. I bless you and I bless the rest of your day.